So I thought it might be useful to do a short video on um, just a little error that, that people sometimes make in Alchemy or Qigong or any, any system that works with the, the Dantian. Now, I just want to say what I'm doing is I'm pointing out not an error in a system, I'm not pointing out an error in a teacher's another teacher i'm pointing out just an error that i see students making because sometimes when i point out these errors i get comments underneath saying why are you being negative about what people are doing i'm i'm not i'm not being negative about the system i'm not being negative about the teacher i'm just pointing out a common error people make so please don't be offended if you you think this is an attack on other systems because it's really not um it's an error that i made when i was younger um, and i was learning it really helped me back in my practice um, especially of alchemy of nadan so um, I just want to explain it really, and that is the location of the Dantian, because there is a literal location, like you can do it with measurements, like they say two fingers thickness or 1.5 sun, or sometimes 2.5 sun, you'll see differences in the description beneath the umbilicus, and there's like a literal definition, but then there is an actual way to find it. So what I want to do is share with you the actual way of finding the Dantian, because I see people making this, uh, this error. So first of all, when I'm talking about the Dantian, what I'm talking about is a centralized location where the mind interacts with the body in order to generate the production of chi or in some systems to store the chi or to bring it in. So hang on, let's break that down, shall we? <laughs> let's break that down. So the lower Dantian, okay, you have three different things a lower Dantian can do. Some systems will use it as a place to mobilize and develop chi. So what happens is the mind interacts with the Dantian, and when it goes down here, when the two interact with each other, then the chi starts to move through the body, and, and to a certain degree it's developed. You have a second way of working with the Dantian, uh, where the mind goes down to the Dantian, okay, and instead of these systems focusing on circulating chi, they aim to store chi, like a, like a battery. So a lot of the, the Neigong systems that are based around this idea of yin chi and yang chi have this concept within them. So if you see a podcast I did called I've got no idea. Oh, filling the Dantian bucket or something. Some really unhelpful title, I know. But if you look for that one, it will give you a more detailed kind of description um, of this process. But essentially, the mind goes here on the Dantian, and then gradually the yin field starts to build around the Dantian, which forms a kind of container. And this container of the yin field is where the yang chi then goes. So that's what I mean. The, yin, the field is like a bucket and the chi goes in. So this is the second way of working. So this way aims to kind of maximize the level of chi within the body. The third category of systems, okay, there's three different ways of working with it, or prime ways, there's others, but the prime way is for the mind to go down to the Dantian, and then when the mind and the Dantian interact with each other, there's a kind of translation of your mind that takes place so that your sensitivity to energy starts to go up. It's almost like, it's hard to explain, I guess, it's like you put the mind on the Dantian, and then it retunes the radio frequency, a radio of your brain's tuned into, and you can start to feel other things going on. And normally those kind of systems are very much about kind of um, exploration of the nature of energy and, and magical systems are based upon this. So you've got these three different ways already. The majority of Qigong systems are in the first category of just mobilizing and building Qi in this area. Now, of course, one of the other things that happens when your mind goes to Dantian is that it calms the mind uh, very much it settles it so it's not up here in the head it, it's down um, but you know this is a, a major component to it now the Dantian at later stages isn't just this field it actually encompasses the whole body it's like the whole body becomes a Dantian um, but at the beginning it's very much localized to this one spot so whatever system you're using you'll need to find the Dantian so I want to introduce you to a point called Ren6 Chi Hai, which is, if I have my belly button here, two fingers thickness underneath this on the other side of my fingers is Ren6. Um, acupuncture point code is Ren6, uh, or CV6, you'll see it written as sometimes for Conception Vessel 6. You can find it online, if you type it on Google you'll find it. Now it's called Chi Hai, meaning the ocean of Chi, Sea of Chi, which is a, a name that is linked to the Dantian because it's smack bang in front of the traditional description for the location of the of the Dantian, the key Dantian in the body. Um, but in alchemy, it's also called the fake Dantian or the false Dantian, F-A-L-S-E, not F-O-O-L-S, not false, false, fake Dantian. Now, the reason it's called the fake Dantian is because a lot of people are accidentally putting their mind on this point instead of the Dantian. 
And this is what I was doing for a long time. And if I were to be a bit generalizing, again, trying not to generate offensive comments for myself in the YouTube comments underneath, but if I were to generalize, I, would, I think that a lot of people are doing this. Maybe, maybe the majority who I haven't considered the location of the Dantian very, very exactly are actually putting their mind on the false Dantian. Now, when you put your mind on the false Dantian, the fake Dantian, um, on REN6, which is where your mind will naturally go to if you try to put your mind on the Dantian, then you'll get two things happening. The first of all is the point will generate energy because REN6 is a tonification point. So in acupuncture, when I put a needle into REN6, normally a bit more gently than that, you know, that's not my normal needling technique, but when I put it in and tonify it, um, it does have a tonifying effect on the body. So you can feel quite sort of revitalized or, or something. So you think, you can think that, oh, I must be building chi in the Dantian, but actually what you're doing is you're just stimulating a tonification point. Now, the plus side of that is you'll feel like you've got more vitality, but the negative side of it is that it doesn't last because you can't keep tonifying a tonifying point and expect it to keep working. Eventually, it will fade. Um, and secondly, as well, you're not actually building chi. You're just kind of stimulating the chi that's already there. Um, and if the mind goes on to this point for long periods, after a while, you can get a kind of stagnation that takes place there that causes the abdomen to swell. And it's one of a few reasons, there's other reasons too, to do with like the fascia tightening around the intestines and things. But it's one of the few reasons why people can get a little bit of a pot belly um, when they put their mind on this point for too long. And people have called that chi belly, but actually it's chi stagnation in that area, unless they eat a lot or something or drink a lot, you know what I mean? But if there's a, no explanation for it, it's often um, stagnation in the area, or sometimes depletion of the spleen chi, which if you go and look up spleen chi sinking in Chinese medicine or spleen chi deficiency in Chinese medicine on Google, you'll find a little bit of an explanation around this. And some people are doing this by over-focusing on this point. So, if I want to find the correct point, then it is at the height of REN6 for the majority of people, but it's further back in your body. It's further back. It's above your perineum or a point called Huai Yin. Ren Wan, Hua Yin, the, the meeting point of Yin. So again, that's another point you can look up on um, Google, Ren Wan, um, if you don't know where it is, but it's essentially a perineum. So if I take the perineum, the base of the body, and then I take, the ab this is the abdomen, my back would be here, this is the abdomen, and Ren 6, where the two cross over, the meeting point between the two is where your Dantian sits. It's where your Santian sits. So I've got a, a horizontal line back from REN6 and a vertical line coming up from the perineum. And when the two cross over, you have REN6. Now, curiously, but it's not the reason why, if you look at the Chinese character for Dantian, Tian, field, is actually a box with a cross in it. It looks like a, a cartoon drawing of a window, like when a kid draws a house, you know, a square with a cross in it, um, which indicates fields field like a place of cultivation because if you ever look down out of an aeroplane on farmland it just looks like loads of squares right so you can see why they drew it this way but i think also it's quite convenient because the the crosshairs in the middle of the chinese characters matches what you're doing in the abdomen it's the crosshairs to find the dantian now i'm not saying that's the reason for the character but it's a handy coincidence isn't it that this crosshair symbol is there because you need to find the crosshairs between huai yin and ren six ren one and ren six now the reason that you'll go to REN6 is because trying to put your mind into a space is very, very difficult. It's very difficult. It's tricky because there's nothing to lock onto. Your mind likes to latch onto something. In meditation, it likes to lock onto your thoughts, doesn't it? And in the physical world, it likes to lack on, latch onto an object um, as much as anything. So the example I give people is if I hold my finger up here and then I put my mind here, like six inches to the left of my finger, floating in space, and I'm just focused on that space, six inches left of my finger, okay, and I'm concentrating next to my finger, but then if I take my mind off of it and just kind of absentmindedly look round, ah, my mind has gone to my finger. It's jumped on there. My awareness is now on the finger. Now, the reason is, <laughs> and is that unless I'm holding it there with concentration, it will jump to the nearest point of reference. It will jump to an object, jump to my finger. You can try this experiment yourself. And in the majority of cases, that's what will happen. So if you think about this in regards to your abdomen, when I drop my mind down into the dantian, which is in the middle of my abdominal space above the, the perineum, as soon as I have a lapse in concentration or I relax my mind, 
it'll want to lock onto an object and the object it wants to lock onto is Ren6. It'll want to come forward onto the abdominal wall because you've got something physical here for the mind to interact with. And this is why they called it the false Dantien, the fake Dantien, because your mind will jump to it. So this is what a lot of people are doing. It's what I was doing for ages. So I was trying to practice Neigong and trying to build the Dantien, but I just couldn't get it, you know? And I, I, I'd spent months, maybe even years, trying to develop this thing I couldn't develop. And it's because my mind was on the false Dantien because I simply hadn't taken enough time to locate the Dantien. As soon as I locate the Dantien, Dantien starts to fill. Like, oh, here we go, here's the results. Simply because Dantien was here, mind was here, and I needed to put the two together. So the way I teach people to do it as I go two fingers underneath the belly button, all right, so two fingers thickness the other side where Ren 6 is, and I palpate it, or you can just hold your finger there if you don't mind looking a bit daft, and I sit it there. And then what I do is I bring my mind to that point, okay? And then I'm just gonna bring my mind forwards and backwards now, so very slowly. You can take your time, I'll just explain it to you quickly. You can do it in your own time, yeah? And I move it from the finger back in my body towards the spine, I guess, and then forward. So I'm just getting used to making a horizontal sort of movement so my mind is on the finger and then I can pull it back towards the spine forward so I'm sliding it back forwards on that line now what I do is I keep it still where I think the dantian is inside and then I squeeze the perineum just a couple of times just like squeeze just that speed it's not like you're not trying to move chi you're just trying to find where the perineum is so I squeeze it and then I need to get an awareness of how far back that is in the body and I bring my mind back to above the perineum because my perineum is not underneath Ren 6, it's further back. So I squeeze the perineum to bring the mind back to that point, and then I can relax the perineum again. I don't need to hold it. I just need to define the point. Then I keep my mind there. That's the first step. Now I would sit and practice and breathe. I won't do it with you. I'm just pointing out a common error. And then what I would do is every couple of minutes or whatever, just re-squeeze your Dantian a couple of times to check your mind is still above the perineum. Squeeze the perineum a couple of times. I mean, to check it's above the perineum. Because if you don't, what you'll find, or a majority of you, what you'll find is your mind will wander forward to chi high, to Ren 6, to the full stantian. And you go, oh, bugger, it's come forward again. So then you have to pull it back. And it will take a little while to just get that horizontal line. For some people, it can take a few sitting sessions for sometimes a few weeks, sometimes a couple of months, but probably not longer than that. Where you just need to train the mind like, keep reminding it there's the perineum so then you pull it back and hold it in that space because you will find that when you practice when you relax your mind a lot of you will jump forward to Ren 6. So the first step is that get the horizontal line so once I'm comfortable that I've done this enough and then I squeeze the perineum and yeah okay the mind has stayed above the perineum I'm happy with that it's far enough back in the body. Now what I do is I bring the mind to that point once I'm comfortable with the horizontal line, you must be comfortable with the horizontal line, invest some time in this practice. Then what I need to do is move it up and down very slowly, okay, above the perineum. So maybe I move it up two inches and then down two inches, straight up and down on this vertical line inside with my mind. So my mind is like a pinpoint. I'm just moving it up and down. And there'll be a, a move very slowly, that's too fast, about this speed. And there's a little point inside that just suddenly feels warm a little bit warmer, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, there's something a little bit warmer there. Or in other people, it can be where there's a little point that feels a bit bruised, as if someone's pushing on a bruise, not really painful, but it's a little pressure there. So people either get heat or bruise. So I go up and down till I get that little reaction with my mind, that's the Dantian point, okay? So then what I needed to do is I keep my mind there till it becomes comfortable, okay? Then I know that's the Dantian point. Now it's very specific because the Dantian point is very small because it's not the Dantian, it's the center, yeah? And it's like the tip of my index finger. And my mind has to go right on that point. So inside that space, in an abdominal cavity this big or some of you this big or some of you this big, whatever, there's a little point the size of your index finger and you have to get your mind onto it. But your mind is going to jump forward to Ren 6. So this is what we do. We look around till we find it. So... You can practice that on your own and, and maybe you already have that point and it's not a problem. But I just wanted to point it out because it is a little bit of an error um, that is quite common in Qigong to be focusing on the full Dantian rather than the true lower Dantian. And it, it can slow down your practice a great deal. 
um, or in my, in my experience it did, especially with Alchemy and, and Negong building the Yangqi and the Dantian, oh, that was slowed down by my error. So hopefully that's useful to some of you, give it a try. Um, and what you do is you find it, and then once you're comfortable with it, what I would then advise is doing the anchoring, the breath practices that you'll also find on my YouTube channel, um, because this will gradually start to enable the mind and the breath to settle. And if you know where the Dantian is because of this practice, the breath will, the breath will settle and lock onto that point and anchor itself to the Dantian. And it might seem like a minor thing because on my YouTube channel, I just tend to share very foundational things. But if these foundational qualities aren't correct, um, then they can really slow you down in your practice. So hopefully that's helpful. And if not, I apologize. I only wasted a few minutes of your life. <laughs>